Acts on 9-11, Defense Secretary Rumsfeld put Saddam Hussein on the hit list. An aide took notes. I knew before 9-11 that many of the people who came into the administration were committed uh, to toppling Saddam Hussein and doing it with military uh, force if necessary. Dan Rather is talking about prominent Washington figures in and outside of government known as neoconservatives. They had long wanted to transform the Middle East, beginning with the removal of Saddam Hussein. The terrorist attacks gave them the chance they wanted, and the media gave them a platform. Richard Pearl, next phase, Saddam Hussein? Absolutely. Uh, one person close to the debate said to me this week that it's no longer a question of if, it's a question of how we go after Saddam Hussein. In the weeks after 9-11, they seemed to be on every channel, gunning for Hussein. You're probably the hawkiest of the hawks on this. Why? Well, I don't know that I accept that characterization, but it's probably not too far uh, off. I, uh, I think that uh, the Baghdad uh, regime uh, is a serious danger to world peace. Weapons of mass destruction in the hands of Saddam Hussein, plus his known contact with terrorists, including al-Qaeda terrorists, is simply a threat too large to continue to tolerate. Among their leading spokesmen were Richard Pearl and James Woolsey. Both sat on the Defense Policy Board advising Donald Rumsfeld. And they used their inside status to assure the press that overthrowing Hussein would be easy. We would be seen as liberators in Iraq. Major newspapers and magazines gave them prime space to make their case, including the possibility that 9-11 had been sponsored, supported, and perhaps even ordered by Saddam Hussein. The president, they said, should take preemptive action. The biggest mistake we have made, it's, it's our mistake, it's not the mistake of the Arabs, was not finishing off Saddam Hussein in 1991. No one got more airtime from an armchair than Bill Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard and a media-savvy Republican strategist. In the 1990s, Crystal had organized a campaign for increased military spending and a muscular foreign policy. In 1998, he and his allies wrote President Bill Clinton urging him to remove Saddam Hussein from power. And now, just days after 9-11, with many of their allies serving in the administration, they wrote an open letter to President Bush calling for regime change in Baghdad. Over the coming months, Crystal's weekly standard kept up the drumbeat. What are the consequences if the U.S. does not finish off uh, this uh, uh, Saddam Hussein as the second step in the war on terrorism? It would mean that the president, having declared a global war on terrorism, didn't follow through, didn't take out the most threatening uh, terrorist state in the, in, in the world. The editorial page of the Wall Street Journal signed on. And so did high-profile pundits like the New York Times' William Sapphire. Sapphire, will you wager Ms. Wright right now that Saddam will be out of power by the end of 2002? Absolutely. I'll see you here a year from now. <laughs> if you go after Iraq, you're going to lose a lot of allies, but who cares? Remember. Charles Krauthammer and other top columnists at the Washington Post also saw the hand of Saddam Hussein in the terrorist attacks. Jim Hoagland implicated Hussein within hours after the suicide bomber struck on 9-11. And the Post George Will fired away on the talk shows. The administration knows he's vowed, Hussein has vowed revenge. He has anthrax. He loves biological weapons. He has terrorist training camps, including in 707 to practice on. 